He was named the bicycle assassin after he killed a businessman in Moscow in 2013. He did it again in Germany in 2019, same method, on a bicycle with shots to the back and to the head of both of his victims. His name is Vadim Krasikov, the man that Russia wanted to trade with the U.S. in exchange for releasing jailed American Paul Whelan. Why didn't it work? We will discuss with Ben Rhodes, former Deputy National Security Advisor for President Obama and co-host of the podcast, Pod Save the World. Ben, thanks for being here. It's good to see you. Um, can we just talk first about what a trilateral negotiation here? You've been part of high stakes negotiation. Vadim Krasikov is in jail in Germany serving a life sentence for murder. The Russians want him. He's not an American prisoner. The U.S. is tasked with somehow convincing Germany to get Krasikov out of jail. What is a trilateral negotiation like that? And what what can the U.S. offer Germany in a situation like that? I mean, it's incredibly complicated. Uh, when you're negotiating a prisoner exchange between two countries, it's difficult enough, Alex. Um, I think that the Russian motivations here um, are, are a bit suspect. I mean, first of all, they're kind of trying to put forward the notion that the U.S. can just tell Germany what to do, um, which is kind of them trying to create a fissure potentially between the U.S.-German relationship. They want the U.S. and Germany to be at odds with each other. So. Part of me thinks that this might have been an effort to drive a wedge between us by getting us to try to press term the Germans to do something. And then the other thing is that they have categorized Paul Whelan as a intelligence asset, essentially. Um, and, and to them, that rises, raises the price uh, for any exchange involving him. Uh, and so perhaps they were just testing to see how far they could go and what they're trying to get. Because I can't see any scenario in which the United States is pressing to release uh, uh, someone in a third country, an allied country, who's been convicted of murder like this. Mm. As far as that, as far as the release of Whelan is concerned, do you think the door is closed at this point? I mean, there are other, there are various legal representatives who say no, no, no. But Whelan's family seems to think. I think they, their quote is, "The situation makes hope a little bit more difficult." Do you think that there's the opportunity to negotiate further with Putin on this? I do. I don't think that the door is ever closed. And I think, frankly, like the Russians will do transactions. They're very transactional people. They got Victor Boot in exchange for Brittany Griner. They will want to get something in exchange for Paul Whelan. I do think the concerning thing in all the reports that I've read, Alex, uh, is that they are insisting that he kind of be treated in the espionage category. That's a different category. And both Paul Whelan and the United States have insisted that he was not a, a spy for the United States. It, it just makes it a different kind of negotiation because the Russians may be seeking other intelligence assets of their own in exchange. They may want to make it into a spy swap. Um, and we don't want to acknowledge, it because we uh, insist it's not the case, that Paul Whelan was uh, involved in intelligence. So it's never the door is never closed. The Russians will always do a transaction. I do think part of the sticking point is the way in which they're insisting that they categorize Paul Whelan. Well, yeah, and if they categorize Paul Whelan as an intelligence asset, they're going to demand a high priority intelligence asset in return. And the Biden White House is under some amount of scrutiny, if not outright criticism, for the asymmetry of the trade they just made. Victor Boot for Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner had literally nothing, uh, no reason to be in a Russian penal colony. Victor Boot very much had reason to be in prison in America, in jail in America. Wh what? I mean, if you're in the Biden administration, how careful do you think they need to be in making sure that the next swap isn't as asymmetrical? I mean, can they do that? Can, do you think that there's appetite to even engage in this precisely because of the difficult decision they had to make on Griner? I think that they've probably been going through this already, Alex, for the last few months. And this is probably contributing somewhat to the Whelan family's disappointment, because I think that they've been testing in the negotiation that led to Brittany Griner's release whether they could get Paul Whelan back uh, in exchange for something that was not uh, an exorbitantly damaging and dangerous uh, cost to them. Having been involved in some of these uh, decisions in the White House in the Obama years, you look at a range of factors. You look at what kind of justice is being denied? Victor Boot only served half his sentence. You look at what is the ongoing risk to U.S. national security by releasing this person? Uh, what message are you sending about the price that could be obtained by grabbing and detaining uh, wrongfully other Americans in other countries? There's a whole kind of matrix that you have to run through. And uh, clearly what the Russians were asking for, for Paul Whelan, including perhaps this bicycle assassin, went well beyond what they were comfortable with.
And so now it's kind of back to square one. Can you make a different kind of offer to the Russians that might put uh, Paul Whelan coming home back in play? I think right now, the fact that we just have Brittany Griner returning home, which is wonderful news, obviously, in exchange for Victor Boot, that suggests that the Biden administration didn't like what the Russians were asking for in return for Paul Whelan. What do you make of the fact that Putin's threatening the nuclear option the, ne the day after this prisoner swap, the, the day after people are saying, oh, maybe this is a signal of warming relations or at least more open lines of communication between the U.S. and Russia? Is that basically saber rattling? I mean, how do you read that? I do think he's trying to indicate that this doesn't represent a thawing in relations. Uh, and frankly, the U.S. had to be careful there, too. It is the case in past negotiations. You know, I was involved in a negotiation to free Alan Gross, a detained American in Cuba. We coupled that negotiation with a much bigger negotiation to normalize relations between the U.S. and Cuba. Sometimes sensitive negotiations around prisoners can lead to discussions about bigger issues. And so I think the elephant in the room in this exchange is, could this lead to diplomacy between the U.S. and Russia on bigger issues? Ukraine is looking at that and saying, not without us in the, in the room. You can talk about uh, your detained citizens. You can talk about the global food crisis. You can talk about uh, potential you know, nuclear uh, hotlines with Russia. But don't talk about the resolution of the war in Ukraine without us. That's Ukraine's message. I think Putin's message today was, just because we did this transaction with the Americans, don't think that that's me climbing down from the position I've taken vis-a-vis -vis the West and vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine. So I think it's status quo ante uh, for the broader tensions, even if we were able to get this important piece of business done bringing Brittany Griner home. Former Deputy National Security Advisor for President Obama and co-host of Pod Save the World, Ben Rhodes, always good to see you, my friend. That does it for us tonight. Rachel will be here on Monday, and now it is time for the last word with Ali Velshi in Velshi you know, in you know, for Lawrence tonight. Ali, good evening. Uh, Alex, it was a great conversation, and, and the U.S. government now, the officials in the White House who deal with hostage affairs, also deal with hostage and wrongfully detained issues because most of the so-called hostages, the people who were taken today, are more like Brittany Griner. She's a hostage. Yes. She, was, she, was, she was detained on a trumped-up charge. She was charged with something. She ended up with a sentence that was completely disproportionate to what she did and then was traded for Victor Boot. That's how, it, how they roll these days. It, yes. it, governments can do this. And to that point about Alan Gross and having to normalize relations, I guess some good came of that with Cuba. But the danger now is that governments can try and extract concessions that they, they weren't otherwise able to extract because they, they hold America. American citizens. I believe the official term for that is being used as a pawn. That's exactly, exactly right. And you were talking about Paul Whelan being, being thought of as a spy. Part of the thing that they do, they do this in Iran, they do it in a lot of countries, and that they take a journalist's phone and they go through it. And guess what you have? You have State Department officials, you've got dissidents, you've got journalists, you've got all sorts of people, uh, and they use those as, as charges. So it becomes very very dicey as to how you negotiate those matters. Or you take teachers in the case of Paul Whelan yeah. who have contacts with diplomats because they teach their children and That's assert right. that they're spies. It is, uh, it is a nasty game, and we hope it ends soon for Paul Whelan. Uh, Alex, you have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. You too, Allie.